in the new age we're heading toward, we're using more and more mobile phones. Soon we're going to have Google glasses on our face. We might have wearable sensors. How do you test all that? Even today, Waze, a traffic app, lets me gesture with my hand. How do you write a script to capture that gesture and repeat it 100,000 times to make sure it works and that the code didn't break when somebody checks a new code? Well, SOSTA is uh, the world's leader in testing, and we're going to hear more about how they solve all of our testing problems right now. Who are you? I'm Tom Lindovitz. I'm the CEO and co-founder of a company named Sosta. And uh, prior to that, I, I've been kind of a serial entrepreneur in the, the Silicon Valley. I, oddly enough, I've been involved with two public companies. Uh, one was Knowledgeware back in the 80s, where I was an executive for that. And, and then most recently, with the team that I have at Sosta, uh, we took a company public in 1999 called Sagent, which was in the OLAP space, the business intelligence space. Yeah. So, so st we, you've been on our show before yep. and, and done some spe speaking gigs with me and stuff. Um, you're a testing company, right? The bastard you, child of IT. <laughs> you, you help developers make sure that their stuff keeps working even though they're on these new uh, agile methods. Some companies are checking in, uh, I don't know, a hundred times a day, you know, the, the lean startup method, right? Yep, yep. We're, and, we're seeing agile development is, is causing the iterative acts, uh, aspects of development uh, to, to magnify, especially around mobile. And, and so you're seeing hundreds of check-ins on a daily basis, thousands of tests run on a daily basis, all because you don't want to push the, the app out and have it fail. It has so much damage if it does because you're reaching millions of consumers in some cases. Yeah. And so quality is becoming quite the hot button right now. So I, I used to work at Microsoft and I remember the tests that they would do, uh, I, I guess unit tests or whatever, but they would just write little scripts that would push the buttons and make sure that everything kept working, right? Right, right. Functional testing is what it's called. Yeah, right. and, and it's still very popular. So you still need to know whether or not a button that you push works and does the right things. But other types of testing that have gotten really popular, especially with cloud computing, has been load and performance testing where you can simulate millions of users hitting a website to buy Olympic tickets or buy new iPhones or whatever it may be and for, have those users be simulated by coming from different locations around the world. So it's uh, lots of different types of testing are evolving, especially around mobile these days. So where I was going with this is there's two trends at one time. One, mobile is, is you know taking off and we're getting billions of users, not millions, billions of users yep. and that probably is where, why load testing is much more important and also making sure that the kid in India has the same experience as uh, the kid in San Francisco, right? Correct. They, you know, I think people are getting much more sophisticated about performance and quality because you are going directly to the consumer. I think for the last 35 years we were kind of building applications for end users that were employees. Uh, so when you go to the consumer, if you're even down for a few milliseconds, it has a direct correlation to your, your revenue and your P&L. And so the sophistication of testing has gone from the dark ages into a real renaissance in the last five or six years. We started, SOSTA started kind of the renaissance with cloud testing. Uh, it's now a category that Gartner and Forrester and IDC all cover uh, with our product cl called cloud test. But it's gotten into the functional area as well with touch test as an example where we test, uh, uh, we use automation techniques to test things like gestures and yeah. you know whether it be multiple gestures a swipe or rotating uh, a picture and that was going to be my second area that's happening which is our you know ways for instance lets me just gesture over it to turn on turn it on uh, Siri, I can start up an app just by talking, yeah, right? Yeah. And, and how do you test that? <laughs> you know, well, and, test. And we just had a company with Microsoft Connect, and you can do things by just moving your hands, right? Yeah, you know, the the age. You know, when you go back to ten years ago, when they had Minority Report, you had Tom Cruise with that hovering gesture concept, which w turned out to be an R and D project, by the way. It's yeah. a company in L.A. Yep, called and, Oblong, right? Exactly, yeah. and and that hovering kind of gestures all goes into how do you deal with data? How do you, whether it's a picture or a movie or a shoe from Nike or whatever it may be, people want to interact with information differently and gestures, hand movements, uh, voice, whatever it may be, 
that's the hot area of the marketplace of interaction with data and information and content in different ways and testing it has been really difficult over the years because that scripting technique never did, doesn't work really great for it and then other tools started uh, taking optical pictures of the movement that didn't capture it because every time we move things around so often you break the test all the time so yeah. With us, we, we kind of broke the code, so to speak, where we embed uh, some code inside the application to capture all the movement of any type of gest gesture or content. And by doing that, we have far better precision of the testing. And it allows us to do far more test automation, which is the other element of it. Most apps are actually pushed out the door through just being manual tested which doesn't give it much breadth to the test itself. Tell me a little bit about Sosta and sure. what kind of news you've been uh, pushing out in the world because uh, I, I hear you buying companies. I, you know, you're not a little tiny startup anymore, right? How many people work there? Uh, we're over 100 now yeah. uh, and growing. We have- Does uh, everybody still get a 30 inch monitor? <laughs> <laughs> Good memory, actually. That, that is, that's been the, the running discussion ever since you walked into our office so about four years ago. We still give everybody 30 inch monitors. Maybe it's because I can't see very well. But, uh, you know, I think we are... It's the world's best recruiting team ever. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're an engineering company. And, and but even the, even the uh, area associate up, up front who answers the, the door had a 30-inch monitor. Well, so. it's a, kind of a recruiting thing, as you said. Uh, <laughs> no, it's, it's a great company. We've been around since uh, 2006. We, we introduced our product, Cloud Test, in 2008 at, at Structure, the first cloud conference out there. Uh, and it's been a rocket ship ever since. Uh, we... Uh, we got a lot of uh, notoriety about how we use the cloud and how we analyze data around load and performance testing. Uh, the Wall Street Journal has named us for the last three years as one of the top 50 uh, uh, VC-backed companies in the world and in terms of growth rates and, and such. And we're very proud of our customers around the world. We're just entering into Asia. And then, as you said, we just announced a, a, our first acquisition, a company called Blog Normal. And Log Normal is the uh, was the leaders in real user measurement. Uh, Rum is the category. We love the name of the the, yeah. the, the category. Uh, but they uh, the guys that uh, back that buddy and Philip uh, who started uh, Log Normal were the guys behind Boomerang, which was the the most popular open source based Rum product out there. And and we're just thrilled to have them part of the team. They're combined with some other players that are on our team, uh, like Cliff Crocker, who came to us through Walmart. And what we're doing there, we created a product that we announced in London at the Velocity Conference as well called Impulse. And Impulse is the next generation of rum. And it's uh, the specific areas of differences to all the other products is it's, it's not thin synthetic, it's actual real users that we're capturing. We're capturing all this data in real time. Uh, so as users are using an app, whether mobile or web, we will be able to understand that uh, instantly around the world and that has impact to the chief marketing officers as well as the developers. Uh, and then the final thing is there hadn't really been any good technology in this area around monitoring and so we're the first ones to deliver both a mobile uh, or a web and mobile uh, RUM product to the marketplace. So we're really, really excited about the acquisition and impulse because we think that's going to be a game changer and it'll be our third game changer for us as we deliver more and more uh, testing and quality assurance related products. So uh, now I want uh, you guys uh, have lots of customers who are doing weird yeah. weird stuff you know <laughs> out there doing bleeding edge stuff uh, whether it be uh, what the Olympics right yeah and, we, uh, we're very excited and about NASA that. yeah <laughs> yeah no we we've, we've got some great customers and 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 whether it's a Fidelity or Six of the top 10 retailers around the United States uh, use our products to test their web and mobile applications. But this summer was particularly fun for us because the Olympic Games in London, of course, is the biggest single event uh, in the world uh, and billions of people watch this. And it became a little bit more of the mobile games because so many people watch the uh, events uh, real time uh, on, uh, on mobile and, and tablet devices. And so we were very proud to be testing and prep preparing uh, kind of our Olympic trials of technology, the London Olympic Committee's uh, websites, uh, as well as several of their sponsors and several of the TV uh, folks around the BBC and such. And so we tested both their web and mobile applications. And to your base point, you know, how do you simulate a 
billion users uh, buying tickets to the Olympics yep. or watching the 100 meter dash. And so our ability to scale using cloud computing, using Rackspace, which is one of our best providers out there, we're able to provision thousands of servers in the effort of simulating, using those servers to simulate people buying tickets or buying an iPhone or yeah. uh, downloading a song or whatever it may be. And we can have those users be physically located in Hong Kong or in London or in Germany or all kinds of different places around the world. And so this concept of cloud testing really changed the game. And then what got my engineers the most excited this summer, despite the Olympic Games, which to myself, that was very cool, yep. was uh, a phone call we got uh, in, in, in the summertime from NASA and JPL, who asked us to participate and partner with them to uh, simulate um, when they uh, landed the rover, the Curiosity on Mars, where they knew millions of people wanted to watch this uh, event live on TV. And so we tested their sites for them uh, in correlation with uh, some, uh, a couple of the cloud providers as well because all of it was being held by, uh, on top of cloud computing. So we were able to simulate uh, millions of users watching or millions of, of us all watching the, the rover Curiosity landing. At Rackspace, I've just had a meeting with uh, Graham Weston and Lou who runs cloud and, and runs strategy. We're noticing this new age coming called, I, we call it the, the contextual age, which is also uh, uh, running along a, a, a growth in open open systems. Android is starting to really take off against a Apple, for instance, is, yep. a, is, is one of the little things we're noticing. Are you noticing the same kinds of things? And contextual means uh, sensors, wearable computing, big data, mapping, s social networks, all mixing together so that we'll have human augmentation. Think our glasses are going to tell us it's How cool, to live our it? lives, yeah. right? Google, Google Glasses, uh, yeah, absolutely. I, I think, I think one of the, the challenges with big data, and, and I, you know, Ken Gardner and myself, Ken's a, my my partner at Sosta. We, you know, Ken is really known for business intelligence and OLAP in the early days. And so when we hear all this discussion about big data, it's terrific, but how do you make a decision from massive amounts of information? And so in our line of work, it's as much about, you know, performance, how do you know where the needle in the haystack that might cause latency might be, as one example of it. And so we are very specific about the amount of data that is captured in our test because there's terabytes of data and sometimes in some cases we think petabytes of data yep. will be captured around the performance of a, of a mobile application and finding that needle is very difficult. And so what we talk about is uh, actionable intelligence. How do you get to actionable intelligence when you have so much information? And one of the things that Impulse does for us because it captures the real user experience is it gives us context. It gives us context to what a real user is actually experiencing versus what we think is going on. And we think contextual intelligence is really the new wave. I, we think you can't make it, you can't take an action or get to that point that I was making a minute ago unless you have context. Or if you do, you're probably going to make the wrong decision because it's very easy to take a slice of information and draw a conclusion if it's only a slice. So the broader you view, the better your decisions are going to be. So we think we would completely agree with the, the next age being a contextual age. We would say that it's going to be driven by contextual intelligence that will enable actionable intelligence down the way. So it's a lot of buzzwords around intelligence, but in, in my view, data is data. Big data is a lot of data. Real-time data is actionable and contextual information is contextual, uh, it gives you the context of making that decision a better decision. This has deep implications for everything. You know, uh, Union Pacific is putting sensors in railroads yep. to study whether that uh, engine needs to be uh, maintained, Yep. Uh, which is pretty freaky. Just by the sound of the engines making, they know it needs uh, maintenance about a month before it actually does. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it is cool. And uh, General Electric, uh, General Electric's doing the same thing, putting sensors on yeah. turbines. Yeah. Because you know, they make turbines for all sorts of stuff, and they they have the same kind of sensors. And 
you know, soon the Google glasses were going to, they're going to know what you're doing. <laughs> well, <laughs> Walking I, I, through a mall. You know? it, there's an unlimited <laughs> ne uh, desire to know more about things. And if you have access to it, you know, for most all of our customers that are delivering mobile and web applications, they might have four or five, six, seven different monitoring vendors yeah. and thousands of monitors and thousands of sensors down the road. And it's all intended, um, albeit there's probably a dark side to information always, I think it's always intended to have a better user experience. Mm -hmm. So for you know the mobile developer, what Impulse does from our product standpoint is they don't have any visibility into how a mobile user actually is using that product. And so what Impulse does is it shines a spotlight into a dark room as to what's happening not to, to spy on that person, but from an aggregate level, understand, you know, if that button was in the upper right hand corner, they would, more people would use it versus it being in the center. Can you do th that kind of real time A-B testing with mobile apps I, I, or with impulse? You know, hey, move the, let's try moving stuff around. See, That's the see intent. How it works. The intent is that you're so iterative and if you have real time information, you can actually impact that almost real time. I mean, in other words, people can begin to, to associate. But A-B testing, this is a way of in, improving the predictive analysis. You know, the better we think that, you know, the, the area of the application lifecycle that is spoken about so f f infrequently is the requirements area. Everybody talks about automation of different processes, whether it be dev or test or ops. But the re issue is requirements. If you do have bad requirements, your user experience is going to be bad. So if you're capturing the real user experience, your requirements are going to get a lot better because that the circle back, the loop back to the developer, frankly, the loop back to the CMOs, uh, the chief marketing officers say, wait a minute, somebody's yeah. using it this way versus this way, we need to change that. So the business requirements, the, the development requirements will change. It'll also change and improve the testing requirements as we go forward. So that circular effect is going to get much better once you have visibility of what the real user experience is. Does that make sense? Yeah, oh, totally. Um, what kinds of things are you, uh, is Impulse able to capture about the, uh, obviously you're capturing what I'm pushing on the screen. Are you capturing latency to servers? Are you capturing, uh, what, what kinds of things are you capturing? Well, think about it as instrumentation on a page, you know, so you get a little JavaScript, a tag is what it is commonly called. So you can collect a lot of performance related data, but you can also get a lot more user information of what buttons are being pressed and those kinds of things. So by having this capability out there, you're getting a, a wider variety of information as you go forward. I, I think ultimately what we think is is a little bit back to this this uh, correlation uh, of data from other sources. So think about if the performance was not good, the latency back to the servers were slow or whatever. Think of you taking information from another area that says for every millisecond or for every second of latency you have, you're losing 1% of your sales. Now you can correlate it so you're now looking at a world view of I've got a problem in London, I've got a problem in London in the east side, and that's costing me $100,000 for every second we don't change and fix that. So the correlation of that comes back to our previous conversation. Wow. And you guys uh, help developers build these systems, and, and you have lots of facts and stuff. Yeah, I'm just there. actually coming back from a conference across the street. Uh, mm -hmm. a really cool. Have you heard of Accelerator? Mm -hmm. Accelerator has about 400,000 uh, developers around the world building native apps. Uh, we were on stage with them this morning, and uh, we're we're taking t we've taken touch test and incorporated it into their Titanium three uh, platform. So now developers are actually using test automation versus just testers using test automation. And what that does is compressing process. That's so awesome. you're not just doing test automation; you're compressing the process that developers are able to do more and more of the testing themselves. And we think that's the wave of the future. So. We, you know, right now the mobile developers are the kingpins in the world, and what we're trying to do is enable them with power tools. That's awesome. Well, we're going to come back to you as this age of context keeps uh, building, because you know General Electric calls it the industrial internet, and uh, we're just going to see more and more mobile, more and more sensors, more and more mo wearable, and that's going to mean developers need new testing solutions. So I bet you guys are going to be uh, hard at work for a long time. We're very excited about the future. Yeah. We're very excited about it. Where do we learn more about you guys? 
Sosta.com. Come spell it. Uh, so uh, Sosta is S O A S T A dot uh, com. Uh, come to our website. We've got all kinds of videos. You can see how the products are used, a lot of case studies of our customers. We're very proud of our customers and our employees. We've got a really amazing community uh, that we're very proud of. Very cool. Thank you so much. Thanks, Robert. Great to be here.